Outside, the snow is falling down, and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. This is going to be advice for the people who have an autistic person in their life. I am going to do a video for advice for autistic people, but that's not this one, that's going to come up in a few days. This one is for people who have autistic people in their life that they're going to be spending time with at Christmas. And just some things that I think you should kind of keep in mind, advice for making their time just as happy as possible. It could be that you're their family, it could be that you're their friend. This is advice for people who are on all ends of the spectrum from going like planning their Christmas or just seeing them once or twice at Christmas. This is advice to everyone. First up, just in case you've been like, why should I listen to you? I am autistic. That's why you should listen to me. Obviously been autistic my entire life, so I have done Christmas have I done it 26 times or have I done it 27 times? So I've done it 26 times. That's why you should listen to me. First off, I'm gonna start off with the disclaimer. Just a reminder that autism is a spectrum. It's in the name, Autism Spectrum Disorder. So all of this advice not, might not apply to your person or people. We're all different. So one piece of advice in this might be the worst possible thing to your person so take what applies and keep them in mind don't just take everything that what i say as a blanket thing i am going to try and keep that in mind as i give you this advice but just tailor it to your person so there's a reason i'm doing this video a bit early not like early early because we obviously are in december but not just before christmas tell them the plans early ideally do it earlier than this but if you haven't already tell them now also with this advice, this goes for any type of age, it's not going to be as tailored to children because children are different. My advice within this is let them collaborate but obviously that's harder with children. But I would say a lot of this does apply to children but there's not any specific advice for children. I'm not a parent so I didn't feel like I completely qualify for that. But this, some of these do apply but if you're looking for like child specific, maybe go look at another creator after watching my video. So tell them the plans early and let them collaborate. I am someone who likes my plans. I like to start thinking about Christmas, end of October, early November. My family's not like this. Drives me insane. I <laughs> don't like it. The earlier the better. Obviously we're in December now. Still want to put this piece of advice in there. You need to plan it. You can't just go with the flow. You probably, when you have somebody who is autistic, in your life it's just going to be something that you have to do we need to know plans we need to know the details we need this structure around christmas period the day mainly the day for this one around the day but plan it early and think about them within the plans don't be planning going to five different households all in one day it's probably not going to work let them in get involved with it ask them what they would like and it'll probably go some more smoothly i know it can be a little bit of a difficult thing to do if you're more of like a go with the flow kind of person but it's just you need to keep in mind this is a disability they have to have this we need structure we need the plans we need to know what's going on so just put in a plan tell them ask them how they feel about it or ask them before you plan and get them involved next is do not have unrealistic expectations for your person or people this person is disabled i am disabled don't make them feel guilty for being disabled because you want to do something and they don't want to do it. Not just for plans, but also how they act within those plans. If they are acting more reserved, don't get really angry with them or upset about them being like, oh, I really wanted you to enjoy this. Why aren't you acting more happy? Because they might not just be able to express themselves the way they want in that moment or that, that might be them portraying that they're happy. Try not to have these expectations that things like movies and TV and all that type of thing perpetuate in that it's going to be a really, really happy time. Everyone's going to be smiley, giggly. There's going to be absolutely no problems. If a problem arises, we're just going to go with the flow. Try not to have that expectation that it's going to be perfect in your head and then resent them if it's that if it's them that means that that doesn't happen. And don't have these elaborate plans for like every single day of December or every single weekend of Christmas. It might just not be possible for them, especially if they're working. If they're a working autistic person, they're probably not going to be able to deal with many plans at all. So just don't have any unrealistic expectations of them. It's not fair on them at all. 
and it puts a lot of pressure and it makes it worse. Like if we know that somebody's expecting something from us, it's probably gonna make us wanna do that even less. That's not to say, don't make any plans with them though. I am an autistic person and I love having plans in December. I really like Christmas, but I like having all of these plans. So not every autistic person is not gonna wanna do anything for Christmas. So that's not to say to make plans, but just don't have these ideas in your head that it's gonna go a certain way when it might not. And also if you're gonna make all those plans, plan in recovery time for them. If you want to do something multiple weekends in a row, make sure that during the week they don't have anything on so they can have that time for recovery in between. Kinda leads on to my next one, which is try and make the focus of Christmas the whole month rather than just the day. When it's just the day, it can feel like there's a lot of, pre lot of pressure surrounding it. And if they don't have a particularly good family unit, friends unit, Christmas day can often feel very, very, very disappointing and also really, really stressful. So try and focus on making December a cute Christmassy month, however that person deems a cute Christmassy month. And act excited for all of those plans as equally as other people get excited for Christmas day. Next one is, if you have plans, make a Christmas diary and share it with everyone involved. So this can be done on Google Calendar, that's what I use, but there are loads of different apps. Make a shared calendar and put all of those plans in there, no matter how small. It means there are probably gonna be less changes because everybody knows what time it is, what day it is. People are gonna be aware of those plans. It means that us as the autistic people can look at that and know when things are happening and plan accordingly within ourselves. Like if I know something's coming up, I can take that time to be like, right, okay, I need to rest the day before. And I don't have to keep asking people what's happening. It's there, it's in there. Eve, bonus points if you have a notes section and you put stuff in there that people need to know. Like we're wearing this, it's gonna be this temperature, we're gonna be doing this at this time. That would be perfect. And having everybody who's going involved means that no one feels left out, no one is worried about the plans, non-autistic people too, and there's just gonna be a lot less changes than what it could be if people just thought the wrong thing was happening on the wrong day and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of plans, if you are making plans with an autistic person, make them. And what I mean by that is, try not to be like, this would be cute and this would be cute, we should do this, we should do that, we should do that, and then not mention it again. It's scary. If there's, I take people at their word, so if someone's like, we should do this, in my head I'm like, okay, well I need a plan when I'm doing that, and I need to try and make sure there's a day free so that we can do that in December. And then if that doesn't happen, I'm just like, oh, I'm still on edge waiting for that plan to be made. And it could literally be the 24th and I'll be like, are they gonna message today saying that they want to do that thing? A lot of us find that too on edge. We're just like, oh, <laughs> make the plan. Or try and be more careful around your word and being like, oh, I've seen people do that. That's so sweet, isn't it? Would you like to do that? Not like, we should do this, we should do this, let's do this. I just feel like that makes it feel way more real and a lot of us are gonna be like, okay, when's that happening? Whereas if you're just talking about cute ideas that people do at Christmas, just be like, oh, what do you think of that? Rather than being like, we are going to do this. In our head, we're like, okay, we're doing that now. So if there's something that you like actually wanna do, make it very, very clear that you really actually wanna do that and set a date to be like, oh, that's so cute, we, we should do that. Are you free to do that on this date? And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, then we can forget about it. But if it's just, a passing comment for you, it might not be a passing comment for us. We might be on edge thinking like, they're gonna message at any point, try to plan this thing and I am not free. Ask when they want their gifts. I know this is something that neurotypical people love doing on Christmas day or Christmas Eve, but again, a lot of pressure. I personally like it and my gifts on Christmas day. I don't like getting them on Christmas Eve. My family knows that, Jack knows that. But some people do not like getting them on Christmas day because there's too much pressure for that day already. So ask them when they want to have them, when they want to open them and don't make them do it on Christmas day and don't make them do it in front of people. A lot of us don't like that, I don't like that. You don't, it, it means that you can't feel what you actually feel. You're focusing more on the people watching you. For a lot of people, that's not everyone. I, I'm a bit like, ugh, I don't really mind, but I think I'd prefer not to do it in front of a, lo a load of people. No, hate it. <laughs> Especially if there's people that I'm not like with, like if it's like extended family, don't make me open a gift in front of them. And I feel like this is really common with a lot of autistic people. So don't force them to do it in front of people. Don't just spring it on them. Ask them beforehand, when do you want your gifts and when do you want to open them? And if they want to do that in private, even with you not around, 
don't take it personally don't force them because they're probably already going to feel guilty as hell anyway but just let them feel comfortable in doing it how they want and don't make it all about you which kind of leads me at my next point and that's don't get them gifts that are about you so things that make you feel good or things that you want to do or you want them to do in a certain way get them gifts that they want first up we're not going to be able to hide it very well that we don't like it and that might make you feel crap we might think we're hiding it well a lot of us don't you can tell on my face we don't actually like them second it makes us feel guilty we we're pretty good at knowing when this isn't a gift for us because we don't like it that makes us feel guilty and be like oh. a lot of us go over this i don't know cycling mindset of being like why can't i do this and it makes us feel guilty for being disabled when it's not our fault <laughs> so don't get them gifts that you want to do on an experience with them or you want them to use in a specific way i feel like that's quite common for neurotypical gift and neurotypical people things as well where it's like you get them i don't know something to wear like jewelry or clothes or something and wanting them to wear it on a specific day that's a gift for you, not a gift for them. You should feel good about passing something over and then someone doing whatever they want with it. That's a gift for them. So going back to when they're opening it, all of it should be about them. So don't pressure them to open it in front of you. Don't get them something that you feel like you have to see them open and you have to see them do. Give them something that's just for them and it's gonna go so much better. So this next one is more about like on the day or plans around Christmas. And that's also don't, hold it against them or take it personally if they go off and be by themselves but also don't force them to do that i hate being told by people why don't you go and have a sec i'm like what do you know about me that might be my adhd but i'm very much like a well no i'm not going to do that because you told me that that probably is adhd so that's not for all of us but the adhd is i like that but that adds more pressure i feel like the us going off by ourselves having a quiet moment is very much a I need to do this for me I'll do that whereas if someone's like go do this that then feels more like a societal pressure rather than a thing to kind of make me feel better and sometimes we just need a break we do and it means the whole day slash plans will go way more smoothly for it if I've had that break I'll feel better my Christmas day has some traveling involved like in the car they're my breaks love it so so glad and that means that in the car I can have my music on I'm relaxed me and Jack can kind of yeah diffuse decompress throughout it chat through how we're feeling that's my break but if you don't have traveling without people that you feel a little bit of pressure from you might need to go off and take some time away in a bedroom in a bathroom don't be knocking on them being like what are you doing why, why, why are you leaving with? Are we not any good for you? Like, no, don't do that kind of stuff. Sometimes we just need a break. It's not personal. Socializing, it's hard. Which leads me to like a sub piece of advice. Make sure that people have that. If you are somebody who's planning an autistic person's like Christmas period, wherever you are, try and make sure that they have somewhere that they can go to do that. If you're in someone's home, make sure they know that they can go to the bathroom. If you're going to a restaurant, make sure they know they can go to the car. Like, tell them where you think that if they need a break, they could go there. Don't put any pressure on it, but just being like, by the way, if you need, feel like you need to have a sec, I've left the car open. Or, by the way, if you feel like you need to have a sec, that toilet's at the top of the stairs. That type of thing. Don't put a huge pressure on it, but just let them know where it is. And you, in yourself, need to plan that before you go. They'll probably be doing it too, but if you are someone that's not as close with them, they might feel like it's too much to ask of that of you. So you just do it anyway. That's my advice. This is a day specific thing. Don't judge them for eating non-traditional foods and don't force them to try some. Don't be like, try a bit of stuffing, try a bit of turkey, don't do it. If we wanna try it, we will feel comfortable. And with certain people, it can feel okay. Like sometimes I'm okay with Jack asking me to try something because he kind of knows more what I like. Beginning of the relationship, would have hated it. But he has a very more like genuine thing of being like, I think you'll like this. Would you like to try it? Don't pressure it if you're going to do it by any means. Don't be like, oh, it's lovely. Go on, give it a try. Just gently, would you like to try some? Take no as an answer and then leave it alone. Don't ask again. And if someone's eating chicken nuggets and chips for the Christmas meal, don't mention it. Don't judge them. Let them eat whatever they want to eat. Eating is so freaking hard as an autistic person. If they found something that they feel comfortable eating in a meal, feel really happy for them and leave them alone. Again, more day specific and plan specific, but be aware of how loud the music is. These are like tips for going above and above above and beyond above and beyond as somebody with an autistic person obviously not everyone's going to do this but these are tips if you want to be like a 
a star ally to an autistic person. But being aware of how loud music is, we're gonna love you for it. We're gonna know it anyway. If you can also be aware of that and then help control it, and we don't have to figure out how we can control it. So if you can control it, like say if it's in your house, put it on as quiet as you can. I mean, some people, like I don't mind music on as long as it's super quiet. Some autistic people don't like it on at all. So maybe just be aware of that decision from their part. But if you do have it on, have it as like quiet as you can as to where you're happy with that people can still hear it. If you are not in control of it, so say if you're in a restaurant or you're at Christmas markets, check in regularly with that person don't try and make them make a decision on what to do, but just being like, are you okay with the music? And if not, help them. Try and get them like out of it if they need to. Ask if they have any ear defenders to put them on or loops, things like that. I love loops for stuff like this. I, I very much am a loop gal. They're with me all the time. I do have an affiliate link for loops, so I will leave them down below. I do enjoy them. When we're out and about, which ones do I use? I have the Engage Plus and the Experience. They were the Solstice collection and me and Jack have just looked and we think they're the Experience because they're just, in the email, they're just like Solstice, but I think they're the Experience. I like both of them. I feel like both of them works for this type of thing. If I was in a house, I would probably use my, my Engage without the, the optional blocker bits that are in them, I would use them without. But if I was at like a Christmas market or something like that, I'd probably use my Engage Plus with the inserts or the Experience. Also, in regards to sounds, if you have somebody who doesn't like loud sounds at all, be careful with crackers and be careful with people shouting. I personally don't mind crackers and shouting. At, well, I do mind shouting, actually. That's a lie. <laughs> if you're in public, just be really, really aware. Watch the person, see how they are. If you're in a house, obviously, you can be like, do you, want, do, do you mind if we do this? But obviously, in public, it's not as easy. On a similar vein to that, be aware of the temperature. Jack made a very good point before when I was planning this video in that in people's houses, it can be very, very hot very, very quickly when there's a lot of people. There is nothing that triggers me more easily than overheating. I will have a meltdown if I get too hot. So just be, if you are aware that the temperature is rising and rising and rising, try and open a window, try and get some ventilation. Coldness, for, personally for me, this is gonna depend on your person or people. Coldness won't melt down me, like it won't send me into meltdown, but it would be nice if like you offered a blanket, but hot like heat, I'll, I will completely shut down. So try and get some ventilation if it's getting too hot. My last piece of advice is to just be aware of them. And if they are struggling, help them without making them make a decision. There is nothing worse than if I'm struggling and someone is like, are you okay? What do you wanna do? I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I want to do. My brain just doesn't work like that. I can't make a decision if I'm struggling already. You can 100% ask them things, but just don't make them make a decision. Be like, are you okay? And if they say no, then you jump into action. Or if you aren't sure of the situ like the action to take, think of what action you can take and ask them if they want to do that. But don't just give them a broad question of being like, what do you want to do? It's probably not going to help. But if they're really struggling and you can see they're really struggling, just get them out. Get them out wherever you are, get them into a quiet place, preferably a warm place that you can, can take coats and stuff off because I really, really struggle with coats and if I'm starting to struggle, I need that coat off me. A great thing to do is to ask them what they need before the event. An example of this that I had a few years ago was my friend Lauren, we were going on a work night out together and she was like, okay, if you're like, what do you want from me in this situation? If I see you by yourself, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to come up to you and ask if you want to go dance or do you want me to just leave it be? That was perfect because then I could be like, this is what I want in that moment, do that. Same with this, if you have a friend who you, again, let's use the Christmas markets for an example because they're a good example. If you go into the Christmas markets, just ask them if you are struggling with the amount of people at the Christmas markets, what do you want me to do? So then in that moment, you know that you're doing what they wanted or what they wanted beforehand. They can always speak up and say no if they don't want to. And it means they don't have to make a decision in that moment. That would be the optimum thing to do. Obviously it means you've got to have a little bit of like preparation in your mind, but I'm not gonna lie, it probably is gonna be easier for you than what it is for them to do it. That was all the pieces of advice I could think of, but I say this in a lot of my videos, if you have any suggestions, please leave them below. I love to make my videos more like resource centers rather than just me being like, this is what I think. Have a look at what other people think as well. If you have any tips, please leave them below. If I disagree, I'll probably comment back and kind of like rejig a little bit for what I think as an autistic person. But if you are an autistic person, leave it. We need other autistic people given their side to it. So 
have a look at the comments. If you enjoyed it, I found it useful, please let me know by liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. It lets YouTube know that you actually did like this video and my channel is kind of good and helps push me to other people and then I can do more exciting videos. But even if you don't do any of that, thank you so much for watching and I shall hopefully see you in another day of Vlogmas. Bye!